So now you navigate into the data. Um, you are move to the labeling tab. We have uh, an inline view and a cross line view. So these are 2D sections through the 3D survey. You can orientate yourself to where you are in the survey using the mini map here in the bottom left. And you can see that if we want to change our inline coordinate, our position in the survey will change. Um, we can toggle to the cross line from the drop down menu. And we can also use a hotkey, so T toggles, and then A button will shift us back and forth between previous lines of the same type. So we can compare. Um, so, you know, the task of interpretation really we leave, you know, quite open, um, depending on what your analysis or your workflow requires, you're going to try to identify some feature in this seismic data. And the goal is going to be to make an automated system detect that for you and essentially classify it um, so that you don't have to. We have a series of tools that allow you to do that. So we have a tools menu up here. We have a brush. So the brush is the simplest of all annotation tools. We simply click and drag over an area and it will assign it a label. So we have a fairly simple labeling system. Um, you can choose different labels. Here we've got one, two, and three, and they could be different things. This might be a particular sequence. Um, I'm just gonna rub out here. You can erase by holding down the shift key with the brush and then clicking and dragging that turns it into an eraser. So label one, it could be a sequence, for example. Um, and you might have different sequences that you want to identify uh, in this image. You know, you can change the brush size by interacting with the brush size field here. We've labeled three different things. You can organize things in terms of groups. So if you click on the button next to labels, you see we just give you a default, but I might want a different group. I might want to label faults. So I'll call that faults. Uh, I'll just call it faults. Now we have a tab we can choose between our default labels, our default sequences in this case, or our faults. For a fault labeling exercise, we might want to use a different tool. So we have a line, line tool essentially just clicks and it's going to just interpolate between the clicks, a smooth curve. and that, that will label a fault. Um, you know, the width of that is up to you to determine, so you can increase it if you'd like, make it a very thick label. Um, that's certainly a variable that you might want to explore as you're trying to train these models. Holding down the control key and then using the mouse wheel or finger gestures on a trackpad lets you zoom in and out. Arrows let you pan and this lets you go through the business of labeling, in this case, faults.